y'all, it's Beth and welcome to my library tour, my bookshelf tour, my book collection. What's on my shelves? These are the books that I buy. This is why I'm poor. <laughs> Welcome to my bookshelf tour. Now, I do have over a thousand bucks, so by definition, I do have a library, and that in itself is really cool to think about. Now, because I have over a thousand books, I'm not gonna show you like every single individual book, but I will go in depth in the shelves, show you each shelf, pull out a few of my favorites, talk about things. You get the gist. Grab you a snack, fill up your Stanley, sit down, and enjoy the show. <laughs> oh, but wait, before we continue on, I did wanna go over uh, what types of bookshelves that I have. I have the Billy bookshelves from Ikea. I have the white ones that are six shelves tall, but I did buy the extensions to go on the top to make them seven shelves tall. I also get asked like on Instagram and TikTok and stuff about my corner shelf. It's not a corner shelf. It's a regular shelf. I just catty cornered it. So there's that. Those are my shelves. And I think that's all the FAQs that you really need to know. I don't know. So let's go. Okay, so before I dive in to each shelf, I wanted to give you an overview of the room, just to kind of give you a better picture of what we're going to be looking at. So on this side of the room, these bookshelves house horror, which are the top shelves, and then thriller books, and then we have Stephen King books and true crime. Just a little mishmash. I tried to organize my books by genre. However, if this were a Barnes and Noble, you would absolutely go complain to the manager because it is not perfect by any means. So that is this side. Then we're going to whoop slide over here. So on this side, we have fantasy, sci-fi, Sarah J Maas, some YA books, romance, literary fiction, historical fiction, more romance, dark romance, classics, yeah, that's what we have over here. And then on the far right is my shelf that's a little bit messy that houses all of my cross-stitching supplies. And of course, a really cool Scrabble board. But we're not going to look over there. So let's go ahead and dive in to the shelves. So here we have my first horror shelf. This houses some of my favorites like Rosemary's Baby, Dead Silence, which is a sci-fi type horror. A few that I haven't read. This is a Paul Tremblay book. This is my last try for him. I have unhauled his other books. I feel like he might not be the author for me, but we're gonna give that one a go. Grady Hendrix, which is probably my favorite horror author because it's very campy, very retro feeling, and I've met him in person, and he is an absolute hoot. He is hilarious, and he actually signed. He put, will you be our new forever mommy and daddy with two little dolls there. Beth and Paul, avoid Houston's murder dolls and do not let them bond with you. I'm serious. A little fun guy. We have some Katrina Ward here, a few arcs. This is a book that I'll be reading next month for Elizabeth, reading Riley's book club. Really excited about that one. My most intimidated book. I'm really scared to read this one. It just seems very intimidating but one day my friends one day and that is this shelf <laughs> now this shelf is my james patterson slash harlan coben shelf harlan coben i've only read one of his books which is don't let go it was pretty decent my husband has read a few more we tend to stock up on his hardcovers when we see them like at half price books and stuff because a lot of his books have been adapted to movies and shows especially on netflix and then over here we have james patterson i am trying to collect all all of the Alex Cross books. I only have three. I don't even think this is the first three. I think it's Along Came a Spider, Kiss the Girls. I don't know what number book this is. I've read Along Came a Spider and I really enjoyed it. When you go into these, just know they're very outdated, okay? They were written probably in the 90s, but for that time, I think it was really good. And then we have a Honeymoon because somebody on TikTok uh, recommended this one for me, so I picked that one up. And then I saw this on Pango first. The cover is absolutely stunning. And it says, you can stop waiting for the next Hunger Games. So that alone sounds fantastic. 
Moving on down, we have the J.D. Barker section of the shelves and then some Dan Brown books here. I haven't read any of these and I have owned these for probably, especially the first two, for probably 10 years. Still haven't read them yet. Let's not talk about that. But J.D. Barker, I've read The Fourth Monkey. It's by far one of my favorite thrillers that I've ever read. It is a crime thriller. It's very dark. 10 out of 10 recommend. He has done some books with James Patterson, so we kind of wanted to stick him right under the James Patterson shelf. This is also one of my husband's all-time favorite authors. That is who is currently reading that book. And this little skull here I got from Home Goods. Now we have our first like official thriller shelf. On here we just have a mishmash like all the other shelves. There was a time in 2020 when I was trying to cope with everything by buying lots and lots and lots of thriller books and most of them are still not read. That's fine. Um, <laughs> We will get to them. So on this shelf, we have some Gilly McMillan, J.L. Butler. I hear that this book is really good. I just haven't got to it yet. Mine is what it's called. Some book of the month thrillers. The Au Pair. I have read this one. Honestly, I probably need to get rid of it because I don't think I really liked it. Some Kimberly Bell, PJ Tracy, Sarah Pinborough. I've read Behind Her Eyes and I wasn't impressed. So it's put me off from reading this one. Chevy Stevens. I enjoy her. And then we have Sherry LaPena. Their big chunk at the end. She's very hit or miss for me. Some of her books are golden and then some of them are just your average drama filled thriller but yeah so this shelf i have cozy mysteries again i don't know if these are all technically cozy mysteries and i may have some more spread out throughout my shelves but they look cute so we have richard osman the first two in that series killers of a certain age this one was fun if you're a fan of like golden girls i think you would like that one and a few other ones that i still haven't read yet the maid i think there's a sequel to that definitely when i get to that i got your guide to not getting murdered and this was sent to me by the author maureen johnson which slay love her and her books and then on this side we have just overflowage of books that couldn't fit on any other thriller shelves so some greg isles books a history of wild places we have a few arts there yeah on this shelf we have cookbooks i'm not a huge cookbook person i have my own handwritten recipes and my own cookbook but normally if i need a recipe i pinterest it and then over here i have my little collection of agatha christie books i do have two of these types of bookends and i got them from rooms to go they are super dusty let's not talk about that and then in this weird angled way this is the bottom shelf so over here i have a bunch of duplicates that I might do a giveaway for or donate them, I'm not sure. And then this is my non-fiction section. So we have like your typical big magic, mastering your mean girl, the subtle art of not giving a fuck, you are a badass, and then celebrity memoirs, which are my favorite types of non-fiction books to read. The Britney Spears one is phenomenal. The Jessica Simpson one is probably my favorite because of nostalgia reasons. Educated by Tara Westover, phenomenal. Such a good, good book. This is just all the nonfiction that I have. We're gonna snake our way through these shelves. So we're starting at the bottom on the second shelf. Over here, this is the Detective Helen Grace series. I started this series back in 2020. I read, I wanna say the first two, I don't remember, but I really need to go back and reread these so I continue with the series. This is a really good crime, darky type thriller series if you wanna get into that. I think this is a good place. To start, it's kind of where I started. I read Karen Slaughter's crime thrillers first, and then I read these. The Brightlands, Samari Rutkowski, Sarah Pierce. I've read The Sanatorium. I need to get to The Retreat. I enjoyed The Sanatorium, but I like crime thrillers. So I think if you're not a fan of crime thrillers, you might not like that. All the Beautiful Strangers. A lot of these I forgot I even had. I Have No Secrets, Number One Fan. A Michael Connelly book. I think I got that one for like 50 cents at a Goodwill. Some Kirsten Modulin down there on the end. Just some thrillers. <laughs> and the next shelf over here, we have this 
duology. My husband has read these and he really loved them. He keeps telling me to read them. I just haven't got to them yet. I am doing a bookshelf challenge starting in March. So I'm hoping that I can get to those pretty soon. We have He Said, She Said by Erin Kelly. Hank Philippi Ryan. I really want to pick up a few of her books. The Winter Sister. This was my very first book of the month book ever. I really loved the days when they did not put the hideous squares on the spine. I am no longer a book of the month member. So I joined in February 2019 and I got out of it last year. A Simple Plan. I hear that this is really good. I really need to get, get to that. The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. I'm going to get to that as well. Some Claire McIntosh. I have three of hers. Still haven't read any of them. I've read one of her books. It's one that I don't own. Amy Malloy. I really enjoyed it. Good Night Beautiful. It's like um, it took another book that I really enjoyed and she put her own twist on it. Some people like that. Some people don't. I like that. And then some Sally Hepworth there at the end. If you really want to know how out of shape you are, do a bookshelf tour, babe. I have my Peter Swanson section. Peter Swanson is also one of those authors that are very hit or miss for me. It's actually more of a miss than it is a hit. The only one that I liked by him so far is The Kind Worth Killing. I've read Every Value Break, hated it. I've read Eight Perfect Murders and didn't really care for it. And then I read The Kind Worth Killing and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite thrillers. So like, what do you do? You know, Joseph Knox. This is a trilogy I haven't got to, but I have read True Crime Story. Kara Hunter. I bought these such a long time ago and I still haven't read them. And then this book has been all the rage lately. I ordered my copy from the UK because it came out in the UK way earlier than it did in the US. But that's why my copy is pink. And then we have some Julie Clark, The Blinds, Tanya French. Before I go to sleep, this is like a classic thriller. I haven't got to it. When I say classic, I'm not talking like Jane Austen. I'm talking like this is an OG, but not like that much of an OG. And then we have Megan Golden, who I've only read one of hers. And I am in the group of people that didn't really care for it. And then B.A. Paris, again, I've only read one of hers this one and I just hate when books are like you all of this build up for what the ending what went down wasn't even on page what I hate that and that's what it did in that book so anyway that is the shelf now we're getting into more of the thrillers that I have read a lot more of if that was English so down here we have Alex Michaelides. Actually, I say that and I've only read The Silent Patient, but hear me out. I read The Silent Patient for my book club and I rated it four stars. And then when we went to go discuss it in the book club because everybody else was putting in their opinions, I wound up giving it three stars. I don't feel like it's an amazing thriller, but I do think I need to give it a second chance. So we'll be doing that. Um, and then I need to also pick up these two. If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This is another one that I have on my priority TBR for this year. Julia Bartz, JT Ellison, that was decent. Some CJ Tudor here, Gillian McAllister, one of those books that I've already read and I feel like the hype really got to me on that one, but also I read it coming out of a reading slump, so that's why I still have it because one day I might want to reread it to double check, <laughs> double check my opinion. Some Louisa Luna. I really love this series. I need to get the third one. These are Simone St. James books. If you're into like paranormal thrillers, she's your girl to go to. They never learn. Let's not talk about it. And then over here we have some Lucy Folly, Ashley Elston, Mary Kubica, and then two AJ Finn books down there. AJ Finn is the author of The Woman in the Window, and he just released a new book this past Tuesday after many years on of a hiatus called End of Story. Really excited about that one. This shelf has a bunch of my favorites. This is one of my like shelves that I just really love to look at. <laughs> So down here we have Taylor Adams. I have not read Hairpin Bridge. I have read his book that I don't own. I need to get it. Is it called like The Last Word or something like that? I really loved it. I need to buy it. Liv Constantine, The Last Mrs. Parrish is one of my all-time favorite thrillers. I have read the other two. They're not as good as The Last Mrs. Parrish, but I still think they're good if you really love domestic type thrillers. Lucinda Berry, aka The Queen. Love her. If you love dark thrillers, 
she's one to check out. Ashley Audrain, loved both of those. Ashley Winstead, I've only read these two. This one I enjoyed, this one not so much. I still haven't read her most popular one. Who am I? And then Riley Sager, I read all of his except for his newest one, The Only One Left. I have also met Riley Sager. He's also a really cool guy in my opinion. Yes, it was this one. Me and Paul met him. And then down at the very end, I have the queen that is Gillian Flynn. I love all of those books. Like if, if I had to, I was going to say if I had to only keep one author on my shelf that was a thriller author, it would be Gillian Flynn. But that is a lie. That is a lie. But she would be like my second favorite thriller author. <laughs> love her stuff. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on up. What do you know? More thrillers. So over here we have Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. Fun fact, I haven't read any by them. Night Film, this one I really, really want to get to soon. Will Dean's The Last Thing to Burn. I'm just now realizing that's written by Will Dean. I haven't read this one, but I have read his newest book, the one about the abandoned cruise ship, and I really loved it, so I need to buy that one. But alas, Adrian McKenty, some other Fierce Kingdom, for better and worse. And then we have some Hannah Morrissey here, Megan Miranda, and Blake Crouch is another author that I need to read. Back at the tippy top with another horror shelf here. So one of the things that I struggle the most with my bookshelves is separating authors, especially when they have written two different genres. I struggle with keeping them together or separating them. Velvet Was the Night is not a horror. You see that here, it is signed though. But Mexican Gothic is, and I feel like she's more well known for Mexican Gothic, so I stuck it up here. Stephen Graham Jones, Joe Hill, another fun fact if you're unfamiliar, that is one of Stephen King's sons. Both of his sons are authors actually, which is really cool. Then we have The Devil Takes You Home, The Hacienda, Lone Woman, some Jennifer McMahon books, The Camp, Hidden Pictures, I really need to get a finished copy because I really love that. Brother, another good one, some Alex North, Josh Mallerman, the Troop by Nick Cutter, which was really good. The Patient, also fantastic. I don't know, can you see these last couple books? We have Mira Grant, who is also Shannon McGuire. This is about like some really fucked up mermaids. It was really good though. And then some Jack Ketchum there at the very end. And moving on over, some more horror books here. So down here we have The Honeys. I feel like this is such a beautiful, beautiful book. Haven't read it yet. Story of my life. Mary by Nat Cassidy. Such an interesting book that was. Between Two Fires. One of my favorite extreme horror books. This is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. Um, Ghost Eaters here. I have two random like books. It's holding this fake plant up. I'm pretty sure I got this fake plant from Home Goods. And then my Dean Coons collection. How many of these have I read? I want you to comment down below really quick. All right, is your answer locked in? If you said zero, you would be correct. I haven't read any of them, but they were on Pango Books for like $2 each. Hard covers. Real quick, while we're on the table, because you're sitting on the table, the tripod, I'm just gonna swivel you here. Swivel. Make this easier for me. This top shelf here is my Thomas Harris shelf. So I have all of these in mass market paperback and then I'm slowly finding them in actual hardback. I'm still missing Hannibal. No, I'm not. I'm still missing Red Dragon and The Silence of the Lambs. And then we have another Thomas Harris book there on the end. This skull is actually a book end. I have that linked in my Amazon storefront, which you can find in the description box if you want to get some. Now, this is my favorite thriller author of all time. So I have this entire shelf of her books. This is actually her series. Blindsided is where I began. A lot of people began Karen Slaughter with Pretty Girls, but I started with Blindsided and I have zero regrets. I've actually read Blindsided three times. I love it that much. So this is her Grant County series. Faithless is signed by her. This one I found at Half Price Books sign which is really cool it's also a clear let's see clear dust jacket that's really cool and then i have a few other ones signed by her 
as well. And a personalized one because Jordan from Storybook Solid went to her signing and got it signed for me. So I will forever be in depth of Jordan. Is that the saying? I don't know, but. <laughs> So you have those and then we have Triptych On is the Will Trent series, which if you watch the Will Trent show and you like it, these are a bit different but still kind of the same. And the books obviously are way better, but it's still a fantastic show. Beth, why do you have two of After That Night? I get this question a lot. Karen Slaughter is my favorite author, therefore I'm going to keep the arc and the regular book because that's how I am. Now down here we have more Karen Slaughter. I have two of her printed novellas up there. The Good Daughter. I think this is another one that I have that is signed. I got this one from Book Outlet and it came signed and I was kind of shook there for a little bit. But yeah, this is also one of my favorite Karen Slaughter books. The Good Daughter and Pretty Girls are her two best standalone books. Then we have Pieces of Her and Girl Forgotten. These are part of a series, the Andrea Oliver series. Beth, why do you have multiple copies? Well, let me tell you. Pieces of Her, this was my original copy, and then Book of the Month did an edition, and it's different than the original copy. Oh, this one's autographed too. I forgot, but... They look different, okay? And if you're a book collector, then you know if it's your favorite author, you need multiple copies. And then Girl Forgotten, I have the arc for that. And then I have this one, which is the one Jordan got signed for me. Hey, I will forever and ever and always keep that. And then I have the Book of the Month edition, of course. And then I have False Witness and then Cocktown, which is my least favorite by her, but no it's not. Pieces of her is probably my least favorite, but Cocktown is very dated, so just know that. Then we get into Miss Alice Feeney, which I've also met. Alice Feeney was absolutely sweet. My kids came with us to this book signing and Alice Feeney even put their names in this book. And when we went to take a picture with Alice, she wanted my kids to be in the picture too. So that was kind of fun. And then we have Miss Jennifer Hillier here, whom I also love. And then Fiona Cummins, who I also really love. When I Was 10, such an underrated thriller. If you haven't read it, read it thrillers. Did you guess it? Over here at John Mars. This is such a good book. Such a good book. What Lies Between Us by John Mars. I feel like he's more popular for the one. I feel like that's his most popular book. And then we have Miss Ruth Ware. She is very hit or miss for me. My favorite one is still probably Turn of the Key, but... I, re I feel like when you read them early on in your thriller journey, you're more likely to enjoy them versus when you're well read in the thriller genre, it takes a lot for a thriller to really thrill you. You know what I mean? So if I read this now, it might not hit the same. I don't know. Then we have Samantha Downing. She's such a sweet lady. She was actually at, not like signing or anything. She sat behind me at the Riley Sager signing. So that was really fun. The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb. This is a book that I really love. Lisa Jewell, another very hit or miss author for me. I really liked When She Was Gone, but my favorite, my absolute favorite is of course and none of this is true. And then Katherine Ryan Howard down there at the end. Sorry, like my bingo wing is all in your face. My bad, girl. Okay, so yeah, more thrillers. We're getting back to the shelves that kind of don't have any rhyme or reason to them. I mean, they're all thrillers, but like the shelf above, you know how it was like almost all the same authors. These are just a mishmash. So down here, I have Meg Gardner. Can you see that? No, you cannot. I've read these three, the Unsub series phenomenal. If you're into crime thrillers, there you go. Crucifix Killer. This is my book club's pick for the month of March. If you are on Fable and want to join my serial killer thriller book club, I'll link it down below. Mo Hader, Birdman. Also really dark crime thriller there. And there he kept her. And The Good Lie. Love these. You, I think, is very overrated. It is what it is. Defending Jacob. One of my favorite legal thrillers. Some J.P. Delaney here. Could you even see all of the books? No, there you go. So these are the Rachel Hawkins books that I have. I also haven't read neither one of these Taryn Fisher books, but I have read some of her older work that wasn't like traditionally published and they're much better, I've heard, than these. So just FYI. So this shelf down here, we have 
Kimberly McCrate. I have two of her books. I've been meaning to read them. I just honestly, a lot of the times I forget what I have because I have so many thrillers. So another reason why I'm really glad I'm starting my little bookshelf ultimatum in March, which you'll see shortly if you are subscribed. Here we have Darby Kane, Pretty Little Wife. This is such a good book. This reminds me a lot of Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, but less graphic. Not as much character development. I like Pretty Girls like 10 times better, but nevertheless, this is still pretty good. And then we have Stacey Willingham. I haven't read A Flicker in the Dark, but I have read All the Dangerous Things. I just thought it was okay. Ashley Flowers, All the Good People Here, and Elena Urquhart's The Butcher and the Wren. Both of these ladies are podcasts hosts, like true crime podcast hosts. Both of these books end on the most horrible cliffhanger. I know some authors like Lucinda Berry has a slight cliffhangers at the end, like those what the fuck and the screen goes black type of moments, but these, too much of a cliffhanger, like you're gonna need a second book. Then we have Karen Dion's The Wicked Sister and the Marsh King's Daughter, The Shards, On the Savage Side. My cousin, when I posted a bookshelf picture on Facebook, he commented and he said, I really need you to read Cain and Abel. It's one of my favorite books. So picked it up. I, I think this is a series as well. This edition, stunning. Come on. Stunning. I still haven't read it though. I'm sorry, Dio. Also, this one I hear amazing things about. So I really want to get to that. Last shelf on this shelf. Let's go down there. This is as low as my tripod goes. I'm so sorry. Lisa Unger here. She's pretty popular. I've read Confessions on the 745. I thought it was okay. I haven't read anything else by her. 13 by Steve Cavanaugh. This is a legal thriller, I believe, and I hear it's pretty dark. I just haven't got to it yet. Along with The Appeal by Josh, John Grisham. There you go. Along Bright River. This I really loved. This is very dated. So this book came out in 2000, and I was like, wow, that's not old at all. But then I keep forgetting that 2000 was actually 24 years ago. So it kind of is old. It is very dated. I want to say it was, does it have a date? It just feels like the 90s to me when I read it. But I don't mind. Well, okay, it's set in year 2000. But whatever. It's very dated. Our main character is a woman. But I think it's really good. And it kind of has a little bit of romance in there. Not like a romance in the sense that like this is like a Lucy score book. Not like that, but like for a thriller. Then we have Matthew Quirk. Actually, The Night Agent by Matthew Quirk. I watched the adaptation of that on Netflix. Phenom. And then we have Miracle Creek and Rabbits. And then the bottom shelf on this little corner shelf is just a wooden box that I keep my techie stuff in there. So I have a microphone, I have like an extra tripod, some cords, things like that. Now we're getting into my true crime section. This is the second uh, bookend that I showed you up at the top there. You see how the back's kind of flat? I think they're really cool looking. I like them this way though. So we have, this is more of like a coffee table book, but serial killers and psychopaths. It's really cool. And then I have, I'm really into like serial killers, if you can't tell. So we have the science of serial killers, serial killer trivia, the world's worst, worst crime. This one, which I really want to read. This is a true story of a guy who would actually correspond with real serial killers like Richard Ramirez and um, the Manson family and just other serial killers. He would like go and meet them. Like Richard Ramirez drew these pictures for him. John Wayne Gacy. Ew. And then he wrote about it. And then unfortunately, I think he took his life because of how messed up it like made him, which I couldn't even imagine. American Kingpin, The Man from the Train, The Mastermind. This I found in a free library, like a little free library thing. It's really old, but it seems really cool. I really need to read it though. Story of my life more true crime. So we have, this is written, the guy who wrote, Stieg Larson, who wrote the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series, was also doing mad research on some lost files in the hunt for an assassin or whatever. He passed away before he could like officially solve the case, I believe. But this book is, I believe all of the stuff that he actually uncovered or something along those lines. Not gonna lie, I bought this one because I thought the cover was cute. I feel like we've been a victim there a couple of times, I'm sure. Waco, Paul Holes Unmasked, I really loved that book. 
This is about Jack the Ripper, which I'm really excited to read. I just got this one recently from Pango Books. Definitely recommend that store if you haven't already checked it out. So here's another one, If You Tell by Greg Olson. This is such a good, I say good, it's not good in the sense that it's good what she did, but it's such an interesting book. Definitely read it. Maureen Callahan's American Predator. I really like the writing of this one and how she put the book together. Then we have some Ted Bundy stuff. The Stranger Beside Me, which I really enjoyed. Uh, it's really hard to say enjoyed when it's a it's a true crime book. All the Living and the Dead. And then we have Caitlin Dowdy, who is, what is she even called? She works at the morgue, you know? She does that whole thing. And so she has some really interesting books. She also has like really interesting social medias if you're into like stuff like that. Last true crime shelf. I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. And then it was finished. I want to say by, does it say? Because she actually passed away before she could finish it. I don't remember who finished it, but anyway, it was still pretty decent. There's an introduction by Gillian Flynn, love to see it. And then I have a few of John Douglas's books. He is a mastermind, just let's say that. He is the man behind the TV show Mind Hunter. He's also what, so like the Criminal Minds, like the BAU and stuff, he's the man that's behind making that a whole thing. Not the show, but the actual in real life people. Boys Enter the House. This is a book about the victims of John Wayne Gacy. Some Charles Manson books. The, what the Dead Know. Koresh, who is the guy, you know, the Davidians, the Waco situation. This is my Jeffrey Deaver shelf. This is me being a victim to Pango Books in the sense, not, not a victim, a sucker. I haven't read any of these either. But again, Pango Books, I got these all from the same seller who sold the Dean Koontz books. All of these were like two or three dollars. Could not pass them up, except this one. I've had this one for a while, The Bone Collector. Yes, if you're thinking of the movie, this is where that movie came from. But yeah, that's Jeffrey Deaver. <laughs> But that top shelf, I'm not going to bring you up there on the table like I did with my other top shelf because they're all literally just the Stephen King Ultimate Storyteller books. There is a lot more than what I have. They're just really hard to get when you're in the U.S. because these books are U.K. books. You have to buy them from multiple sellers. Some sellers will only have like two or three. Some sellers will send you the wrong books even though you chose the one with that cover. It's just a pain in the butt. Sometimes they take like three or four months to get to you, blah blah blah. And Book Depository, which is where I initially started buying these from, closed down. So, you know. So here is my first non-Rainbow Stephen King book shelf. The Castle Rock Kitchen cookbook down here. What is this called? Nonfiction books. He did write a book about baseball. He is a diehard Boston Red Sox fan. So of course he wrote a book about the Boston Red Sox. I have been slowly collecting a lot of these. I'm not looking for them in pristine condition. I just would prefer the original covers in hardback and not tore up. It doesn't have to be like first edition or whatever. This is just all Stephen King. I have multiple copies of some of them, including Pet Cemetery. I do have hardback copies of these two, but I kept the paperbacks because these are more comfortable to read because the hardbacks are so ginormous and I love these two books. I would definitely recommend reading it before you read 1122-63. That's just me recommending that. This is my favorite Stephen King shelf. This figure here I got off Etsy probably in 2021. The seller that I got it from no longer has, like she's still up and she has other heads, but she does not have Stephen King in her shop anymore. I will forever and ever and ever own that for as long as I possibly can. It is chipped. My husband chipped it, which is fine because like if you see like actual, I don't know, Roman statues, they have chips and stuff gives it character. This just looks so pleasing to me. You know how they have the t-shirts or the art prints of stacked VHS tapes or stacked cassette tapes? That gives me, this gives me that vibe. Some of my favorites, Misery for sure, It, Dolores Claiborne. Dolores Claiborne, the audiobook, 
phenomenal. Rose Matter was pretty good, pretty underrated. I don't ever hear anyone really talk about that, but I really enjoyed it. And Pet Cemetery, of course. I just love these. I love how old they look. Can you wait until like 50 years from now when we're all little grannies and all of our books look really old? It's gonna be amazing. Like all of the Sarah J Moss books or the Lucinda Berry books, since they're just gonna be aged and perfect. <laughs> okay, anyway more Stephen King. We're going to go down. So here we have a little mix of some of his older works and then some of his newer stuff. I do get a lot of questions on this set here. If you buy these books individually, they do not have this face here. You have to buy them in the box set. I'm not 100% sure the box set is still available. If I can find it, I will link it down below for you if you are interested. Here are my hardback copies of it and 11-22-63. These are a lot of his super newer stuff. I am currently reading The Institute, so that's fun. Full Dark No Stars. This is my favorite short story collection of his so far that I've read. Has some really dark, dark stories in that one. I'm sorry, there's kind of a glare because the window's right there. I try to get as much of it out as I possibly can but it's just going to be there. I'm sorry. So over here, we have the Glow in the Dark editions. You can get these from Books A Million. There is one more, The Shining, but I don't think The Shining one actually glows, but these three glow in the dark. These are another edition. There's two more in this set that I need to find. They're a lot more expensive. I want to say it's Pet Cemetery and Carrie, but these are what these look like. Holy cow. This is a lot heavier than what I meant. What is the Oh my gosh. I forgot I had this. This <laughs> is Jack Torrance's head. I ran out of room, so I had to put him in the back. I got that off Timu for super cheap, so if you're wondering where you can find that from. I forgot I had that back there. Actually, come to think of it, I have some mass market paperbacks hidden behind some of the books up here. I think like four or five of them. These are the Halloween editions. I'm also missing, I think, two more from this set. These are really pretty. I like these very much. And then I have two of the Barnes & Noble leather bound editions, The Stand. And then this has three books, Carrie, The Shining, and Salem Lot, Salem's Lot, Salem's Lot. And then over here we have the first two of the Dark Tower series and then a paperback copy of Mr. Mercedes because I want to annotate some of his works and Mr. Mercedes is one of my favorite books by him. So I bought that. Now this is my Nordic Noir shelf. Down here, I have The Crow Girl. This is one of the darkest books that I have ever read. I recommend it because it is good. However, it is extremely dark. So please just know if you're a parent, you probably definitely need to look up some trigger warnings, babe. Then we have this series. I don't, the Millennium series. Okay, so the original author wrote the first three and then he passed away. Now there are three more. I don't have the last one, but I have these two. I found all of these at Half Price Books. Score. Then we have Joe Nesmo. These are probably not in order because I just kind of shoved them up there. Some of these are part of the series. Some of them are not. I want to start the series. I know it starts with the bat. I hear the snowman is where it gets good. So it takes like eight books to start getting good. Lars Kepler. These are not in their proper order, but they are all part of a series. This is the first one for sure. I don't know the, the, the number because I just started collecting those. And then lastly, the only standalone. Oh, well, the Crow Girl technically is a standalone. Why did I say the only standalone? Because I think these two, whatever. The Chestnut Man. <laughs> it's one I really want to get to. I've had it for such a long time, but I just haven't, I haven't read it yet. Story of my life. Okay, down here. My tripod is janky. This is like my series that are dated in the sense that besides like these two. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Oh, my heart just went straight through my vagina. The series scared the I fuck out. Shut up. Besides these two, I think all of these are super dated in, in the, oh, and these two, obviously, because those are 
her two newest in the J.B. Rock. Anyway, all of these are like written in the 90s, early 2000s. So these are very old and dated. Anyway, we have some Lisa Gardner here. A lot of her books, especially like these, are written, they're very much like Criminal Minds because the characters are part of the BAU. And then we have the Tess Gerritsen series. This is the Rizzoli and Isles. You know that TV show? Yeah, that's this. Deja Dead is the first book to the Bones TV show. That's this series. The Bones TV show is based off of the series. And then we have this random book. I don't even know. And then those were sent to me. And I think I think those are like number 56 and 57 or something like wild like that. But anyway, these are all part of series that I don't, I have random installments. I haven't finished. I haven't started some of these, you know. Now we're going to hop over to the other side, which is like fantasy, sci-fi, romance, literary fiction, and things like that. Okay, I'm going to do two birds with one stone. So we're going to do these two shelves right here while we're up here on top of the table. So over here we have the Scythe Trilogy by Neil Schusterman. The Last Magician. I think there's a third book. I don't have it yet because I haven't read these. I haven't read these either. And I also have not read these. And this is the Renegades Trilogy by Marissa Meyer. All of these are unread. But if we swivel to this side, all of these are red. So we have the Harry Potter series. I have the original seven and then I have the first book in the illustrated edition. I need to get the other how many ever are out right now. These stay up here on the top shelf because I'm trying to keep them in the best condition that I can keep them in because I do hope that my children read these when they get older. More fantasy here. So I have Rebecca Ross with A River Enchanted and its sequel A Fire Endless and then Rebecca Ross again Divine Rivals and its sequel Ruthless Vows. I appreciate when authors just stop at two books or three books, but hot damn. Oh, this is the Shatter Me trilogy. And then you blink and you're like, oh, there's eight books or how many ever books is in that series? I don't really know, but you understand. So I appreciate a good duology. Then we have Assistant to the Villain, Powerless. This is all the rage right now. And then the first two in this trilogy, I need to get the third one before I wait too long and I can't find it in hardback. Here are some YA thrillers. This might not and this, maybe the, these might not be YA thrillers. It might be something else. I don't really know. I haven't read them yet. So over here, I have my two Stephanie Perkins books, Holly Jackson, Karen M. McManus. I have read One of Us is Lying, and I was very underwhelmed with that. I have no idea why it's so popular, but it could be I'm just not super into YA thrillers. I don't know. I really need to continue on and figure it out so I can unhaul these if I need to unhaul them. I digress. We have Never Will Wake, Horrid, which this cover is gorgeous. This is House Apollo. That's pretty too. I love a good flower moment. I bought this because I thought Halsey was like going to be involved in an adaptation or something. I don't know if that's still a thing, but there's that. Some more YA thrillers. I think these are all thrillers. Again, I could be wrong. This is a rose quartz skull. I found this at Home Goods, and I wish I would have grabbed a few more. I only grabbed the one. I'm hoping that this Halloween time they have more. It's heavy. Like it's rose quartz. It's legit and I love it. So here we have the Maureen Johnson Truly Devious series. The author sent these to me because she is a sweet angel. And then I have a bunch of these also all sent to me by the author. So, or at least these three. Anyway, and then this lie will kill you. I've had this for forever and I still haven't read it. I need that on a shirt, I think. This is one of the shelves that really takes me back to my prime, what I consider like my prime getting into the book world time. I guess if I still owned like my Hunger Games books, my Divergent books and stuff like that, that would, I don't have those, but I've owned these like since like Red Queen came out, Glass Sword came out. I've owned these for that long. And then this series over here, I haven't read Salt and Stone, but Fire and Flood was one of my favorite books back in the day. If I remember correctly, it was like a Pokemon meets Hunger Games situation. I definitely want to reread these soon. This shelf is just random hodgepodge. I have Fountains of Silence. I don't know. Is that historical fiction? I don't know. Then I have the Samantha Shanning books. I think I was sent this one by the publishers 
when it first came out many years ago and then I found these two and I think I'm missing one actually these and I'm missing one of these as well I don't know which one and then I have The Darkest Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein I don't know why because I started this book in like 2018 and I even annotated it or was annotating it and I never finished the book so you could tell I probably should either finish it or get rid of it but there's there's that down here at the bottom we have the darkest minds series by alexandra bracken i've read the first three i had no idea there was a fourth one until here recently i just bought that i read the darkest minds when it was just an arc and i reviewed it on my youtube page back then before this came out she contacted me and was like hey can i send you a signed copy and she did this was my very first personalized signed book but I love the series and I recently got this newest one so I want to reread these so I can read this newest one and then I have the girl who drank the moon hide and seeker this series one installment in the Aragon series I've never read that but I bought it but I need to finish buying them before you can't really find them in decent condition anymore because I feel like this is something that if I don't ever get to it my kids my kids may you never know over here is my classics shelf. I'm not super big into classics, so here we are. To Kill a Mockingbird, here's the sequel. Why, why aren't they together? I don't know, this Neil Gaiman book, still wrapped up. This I found the other day at Half Price Books. She's gorgeous. I wanna get more installments of it. It's like the Franklin Library editions. This is Pride and Prejudice. Stunning, stunning. Some Sherlock Holmes stuff here. Little Women, Hatchet. I love this in school. So we had to read it like in middle school or something. And then I bought my own copy and I've read it since then. But one day maybe my kids will want to read it. I don't know, I really loved it in school. I think maybe this is why I really like thrillers because it, it's not a thriller or is it a thriller? It, it's a survival book, whatever. Outsiders, another Pride and Prejudice, you get the gist. This is another mostly young adult thriller shelf. These three, I don't know for sure if they're thrillers or not. This one obviously is not. But down here we have Tiffany D. Jackson. The Weight of Blood is a, what's it called? Like a reimagining of Carrie by Stephen King. This is just like a more updated, different kind of topic, but still so good. And then we have some other ones like Kate Alice Marshall, The Project by Courtney Summers, and then Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. Looking at this shelf, I realize I should probably reorganize these a little bit better because I do have some young adult thrillers down here that would probably fit better on the shelf down there. I digress. So we have a bunch of contemporary romance type books. This one right here was signed to me by both John and Hank Green. That's really cool. I used to have all of John Green's young adult books. I got rid of most of them and kept these two because these were the two. Well, this one because it's personalized and this one was like my favorite of the ones that I read by him. I have dress codes for small towns, Eliza and her monsters, fangirl. I love this book so much back in the day. I definitely need to give it a reread. The Cellar is one of my favorite young adult thrillers ever. It's so dark, especially for a young adult book. Here we have my TJ Klune section. I feel like his books just feel like a warm hug and the covers are absolutely stunning. The color scheme of all of his books, how they just look so good together. They match my volcano candle. So that's why that's, this is normally not there. Okay, it normally looks like this. This is my annotating bag. Currently not annotating anything though, so I just stuck that right there. This is my Percy Jackson shelf. I used to own so many of Rick Riordan's books, all the Branch Off series and such, but I eventually got rid of all of those and just kept the OGs because not only will I want to revisit these one day, but I think these are also some of the books that my kids will like to visit one day. And I have this little stamp at the top that says from the library of the more Vance. I got this from Etsy, I think. So I just think it's really cute. I do stamp some of my books, just ones that I know I'm going to have for a long time. And then this was in like a book box. It's a wax thing. I don't even know who that is. An old lady, I guess. BG serial killer or something. But nonetheless, that's that shelf. These are my Twilight books. These are so old and raunchy, but they're my books. You know, I went to the midnight release 
for these two. I just, I, I love them. This I got from Rooms To Go. This top shelf here are like my fantasy series that I just started collecting slash then this. This is fully done, I believe. <laughs> It's just the trilogy and The Hobbit. I just didn't have enough place to put these. I have read The Hobbit. I even annotated The Hobbit because I loved it so much. I really need to continue on and read the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But we have Outlander and Dragonfly and Ember. I've read both of these like 10 plus years ago. I definitely am ready for a reread so I can continue on in that series. The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, Robin Hobb, Joe Abercrombie. I've been really loving fantasy book talkers and booktubers lately so can you tell this is another one of those rooms rooms to go book ends i don't think you can see this but this is also from home goods i thought it was really cool looking and it just sits on the end of the shelf and this ladies and gentlemen is my sarah jamas shelf this is very colorful which i love okay i did have the og covers of all of these books i sold them all in like 2022 2023 because i just like these covers better i have two copies of akatar because i am about to go through a reread of all of these and i want to annotate them all so i want to annotate in paperback so i'm gonna get the paperback of these anyway you know sarah jamas you know the drill you know who she is. Even if you don't read her, you've heard of her, okay? Okay. This shelf is what I like to call my aesthetic shelf. I just really like the dark colors with the pops of like red and golds and oranges. I, that's just very pleasing to me. I put this here, I felt like it looked good. And we have Rebecca Yaros and my a fourth wing does have the sprayed edges because I bought it before I knew that it was gonna blow up and I'm really glad that I did. And then we have the holiday edition and then Iron Flame. Shauna McGuire's middle game, some Victoria Schwab books. Like look how I have this OG copy. Addie LaRue, some Erin Morgenstern, and then Lee Bardugo. I got rid of all of my other Lee Bardugo books, but I kept these. These covers, I'm sorry. They're gorgeous. But I got rid of the duology that she wrote, the Crows, Six of Crows duology, that's the name, because I did not like the trilogy, the first book in the trilogy that she wrote, the Young Adult series, and then I got rid of those, and then because I thought the duology was just to continue, I just got rid of all of them, and I regret that. So I, you, if you see me rebuying the Six of Crows duology, hush your mouth, okay? Not me going on a little rant that nobody asked for. <laughs> So this is my fictional witch books shelf. So up here we just have some paperbacks and then The Year of the Witching. That's a really good book. I really enjoyed that one. The Practical Magic series here. I really need to get to that. I absolutely love the movie. We Ride Upon Sticks, Circe, The Witching Hour by Anne Rice. And then this, I think there's a fourth book but I still think it's called a trilogy. I don't really know, but A Discovery of Witches. And then of course, Slewfoot, one of my favorite books. It's the fact that I can barely talk because I'm literally fighting for my life over here, trying to breathe from climbing up and down and up and down and sitting on the floor and climbing on a ladder. How do y'all do this? I don't know. So this is what I like to call my vampire shelf. So over here, I have this little dude. I got him from Home Goods. I'm seeing a trend with my decor. And then we have Olive Blake's Masters of Death, Dracula and Dracula the Undead. This is the sequel. So I should probably switch them. The Historian, a very beat up copy. A Dowry of Blood, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and then my J. Kristoff collection. Two of these are Empire of the Vampire. One is a Barnes and Noble edition and one is just regular. They're both signed though, that's really cool. And then I got an arc of the sequel. And this is my sci-fi shelf. So I do have a little room, actually no. There's a book missing here. I was gonna say I do have a little room to grow. There's a book missing here. It's the prequel to, what is this called? To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. And my husband's actually reading that, so that's not there. But we have the Ready Player One and Ready Player Two books, the Hank Green books. So Andy Weir, he's really great. The Apollo Murders, this is actually written by an actual astronaut, which is really cool. A few more random ones here. And then we have the Red Rising series. That is definitely being read so soon because my husband has read them all and he loves them. And I've been seeing them a lot pop up on my FYP. And so I'm just like, you know what? 
it's time. So down here at the tippy bottom, is that a thing? At the very bottom, this is like fantasy, magical realism mixed with a little bit of fantasy. This is like folklore fantasy. I don't know. I don't know specifics. I just know that I buy books and I read books. So yeah, Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe. That was really cute. It's very much like Hallmarky Halloween movie vibes. There's not like witches or Halloween talked about in here. I don't remember. It just gives me that vibe. This will fit if you're into like folklore and stuff. This is really good. And then I have a jar that I bought to be my TBR jar. I'm going to fill it up with all of my unread books on little slips. The jar is too little. Till I get more of these unread books read, it's going to be a little decor piece. Over here are some more classics. I bought these to decorate my daughter's nursery when she was a little baby. And then she's grown out of that. She's five now. And so until she's old enough to take care of her books. She gets books all the time, but they also like wear them out really fast. So until she can take care of them, I have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Peter Pan, and a little princess. You can't get these editions anymore, so that's why I'm being pretty stingy with them. I haven't read any of that, so I added those to my TBR jar because I eventually would like to read them. We have reached the home stretch. Is that how you say it? I don't know. This is the last, like, full tall shelf. So this is the bottom of it. Down here, I have some overflowage of some, like, romance-type books, some Christmas-type books, books that I just need to get to. A candle, because when you run out of things to hold your books up, these candles come in clutch. And then we have a stack of four historical romances over on the end. This is another romance book slash some of those on the very end down there. I don't know if they're romances or not. Actually, this one is probably more of, like, a murder mystery women's fiction type book something along those lines but we have rainbow rowell down here remember when she was like all the rave back in the day and now i don't even think she writes books anymore christina lauren love in other words this is one of my all-time favorite books ever to exist i'm absolutely obsessed i have annotated it i have cried physical tears in this book i love it a, a random ass Nora Roberts book that I've read, that I've read. James Patterson, I know it's like James Patterson is on the other side of the room, but this is like a romancy type book because it's James Patterson with Gabrielle Charbonnet. This is such a good book, okay? You're just gonna have to pretend that James Patterson's name isn't on it because it's such a good book. And then we just got some more, some more women women's stuff, women's mm. fiction, like these Ellen Hildebrand type books, Wild. Pretty much, that's it. Oh, my, my phone just went off as I was getting ready to tell you about this shelf here. I kid you not, I cannot make this stuff up. It is an email asking if I wanted an ARC copy of Rainbow Rowell's newest book. I'm sorry, what a coincidence. So over here I have my dark romance section. I don't know if all of these are considered dark romance. Like Butcher and Blackbird, it's about serial killers. What actually classifies a romance as a dark romance? I don't know. Also, this Anne Rice, this is a, an erotica. So, it's like the only place that it really fits. So, it sits. Okay? This little thing I got from Timu. The picture made it look like it was maybe like five inches tall. When really, she is not. It's like a little body yaddy yaddy yaddy. Okay? It's rose quartz. And then I have my Kindle here. Just... Just chilling. I have all of my, let's swivel you just a tiny bit, all of my Colleen Hoover books. I did get rid of the ones that I don't, that I'm not a fan of, like November 9, for example, but I, I know a lot of people don't like her anymore, but I do, babe, okay? I do, and that's all that matters, and that's why she sits. So on this side, we have more romance. So I have all of these Lucy scores, and then we have the Elsie Silver books. I bought this one off eBay because you can't find it anywhere else. This is a janky. This is a bootleg, okay? Don't be like me and pay $20 for a bootleg. I didn't know it was a bootleg. I would have never bought it. But obviously, you could tell. You could tell it's a bootleg, okay? Then we have my Emily Henry stuff. I got these off of Amazon, these fun-looking ones. Like, they're fun. Like, look at that. So much better, right? Got those off of Amazon. I'd love to see it. And then we have my annotated and very loved edition of Happy Place. And then two more Emily Henrys over here. And then one book that you can barely see. Taylor Swift. This is being saved for my daughter. She loves Taylor Swift. But I don't want her to ruin the book. I want her to be able to have it. So I'm going to wait until she's a little older. And then I'll give it to her. 
another romance shelf. So on this end we have two of Elle Kennedy's books, Magnolia Parks, on a Huang. I just got this one in the mail. It's an ARC. I got it late, but I'm really excited to read it because I've heard such great things about Mariana Zapata. She's a thicken. Binding 13, another thick one. If you had been with me, then we have some Hannah Grays, another sports romance, Ashley Poston. I know everybody's all about the seven year slip, which I have read and I did enjoy, but I am one of those that thinks the dead romantics was top tier. Abby Jimenez, Carly Fortune, my Allie Hazelwood section. I'm definitely swapping these two out with regular versions and getting rid of my book of the month versions because look how bulky and like so out of pocket they look. You know what I mean? And then we have some Tessa Bailey here and two Sally Thorns. I am currently reading Fix Her Up, which is why there's a random little tassel there, which I really like. I like this bookmark. Let me show you. It says In My Smut Era. It's pink. It's checkered. We love it. Etsy is definitely the place to go for some really cute bookmarks. This shelf is like my women's fiction slash women's fiction. I don't know. I think it's all women's fiction. I could be wrong. So over here we have my Taylor Jenkins Reid collection. I absolutely love her. Kristen Higgins, Pack Up the Moon. By far the saddest book that I have ever read. I cried through the entire thing. Lessons in Chemistry and Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow. These two I definitely want to read super soon. We have some Catherine Center here. I, if you're a women's fiction girly, definitely recommend. Things You Save in a Fire is my favorite of all the ones that I've read by her. And then a few more down here. We have a Nicholas Sparks and Jodi Pico. This one by Jodi Pico called Change of Heart. This book was the very first book that I read coming out of high school that was not a school assigned book. This book got me back into reading for fun. It's very sad. I haven't read it since, but I really want to. So that's why I bought another copy. And then we also have Mad Honey there on the end. And the very last shelf, I really hope you can see this because I can't. But we have, I think all of these are historical fiction up until about here. So we have some Kristen Hanna, Lovely War, this book by Millie Bobby Brown, All the Light We Cannot See, Where the Crawdads Sing, The Alienist, Betty, The Vanishing Half, City of Girls. There you go. I just got this one out of a free library. I didn't realize it was the second book in a series, but has good ratings. So Mary Jane, I love this cover. I enjoyed the book, um, but I love the cover. This one I need to get to really soon. I've heard nothing but amazing things about that one. And then on the end here, can you see? I don't know, I can't see. I hope you can see. On the end here I have, I don't even know what to properly categorize these. So we have like the secret history, my Dark Vanessa, The Girls at 17 Swan Street. Wow, the, girl, the girls at 17 Swan Street, Migrations, another Olive e. Blake book. This one's like more of a romance type book. And then The Song of Achilles. So this is like kind of random, but also historical fiction. And that is it. Would you believe me if I told you this took me five hours to film? Five hours to film. Perks of having children, having one battery for my camera, having to fight for my life, to breathe from standing up, standing on my knees, climbing up on a ladder, getting back down, sitting on the floor, standing up. Holy guacamole, that was a lot. And as I'm saying this, I could see two more books that I didn't show you. Let me grab them. These are more so like coffee table books. So the first one I got, is Harry Potter the Creature Vault and it's just a bunch of creatures from the Harry Potter books and movies. It gives you information on them, what books you can find the creatures in, things like that. It's really cool to look at. And then lastly I got this Mamma Jamma Harry Potter page to screen. The, the I cannot speak. <laughs> it's been a long day. Harry Potter page to screen the complete filmmaking journey and this just has all sorts of info in it on scenes that were filmed. Hello? 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 Anyway, and that is it. I do hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, bye!